All right, let's talk about forgiveness. How you can forgive anybody for anything. So I'm gonna use my relationship with my father, my earthly father, my dad, uh, to talk about forgiveness with you. So, because that's the hardest uh, person I've ever had to forgive. And I've had to forgive a lot of people of a lot of things. And, uh, but my dad was the hardest one because my family went through so much pain and um, trauma. And, you know, even after, after forgiving my dad, the scars, the wounds, the pain of him not doing some of the stuff a dad was supposed to do remained. And, and that's, that's a hard pill to swallow when it's like, well, yeah, I'm supposed to forgive. How do I forgive this person? So I want to give you some insight into how to forgive anybody of anything. Um, first Peter four, verse eight, we're always going to use the Bible here. Uh, first Peter four, verse eight says above all, Keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. I can feel God even as I say that. Love covers a multitude of sins. So when I forgive my dad, I can't just go around, around spouting off everything bad he ever did, right? Sometimes that might be useful to, to help somebody or to tell a story, but it's more important that love covers the love God's given me as I learn how to walk like Jesus. Well, love covers. So my love is called to cover my dad's sins. So not only do I forgive him, you know, when Jesus forgives us, he has the divine ability to separate our sin as far as the east is from the west, to remove it, to blot it out. It says our sins are blotted out. They are removed. So he doesn't even look at us through the sins that we've been forgiven of. Uh, but, but how do we, in human form, we can't forget. We can't forget sometimes the scars, the pain, when we're still overcoming something that we feel like is unfair and, well, I wouldn't have had to deal with this in life if I would have had this in my parent. Uh, well, the Bible says love covers. And I've learned to cover my dad's sins. It's, it's been not easy. It took years. <laughs> but God walked me all the way through it. Now, if I would have made this video five years ago, which I did make this video five years ago, and I never put it up, and um, thank God, because I wasn't where I needed to be to make this video and to honor my dad the right way. Now, love covers, that's so important. Let's look at the Ten Commandments. Because I'm using the case of my father, who... I'm not going to mention a lot of stuff because I do honor my dad. And um, I'll talk about that more in a moment. But uh, adultery, abuse, he didn't cover and protect my family. My family was split in so many problems like poverty and identity issues. And so many problems came from a broken family. You know, it's, it's not God's desire that a family's broken, but my mom was right to leave my dad. It was the right thing to do. It, he was not in a place that um, he was able to be in the home with us. And, um, but God's done a great work in my dad's life. And miracles do happen. Now, one of the, the Ten Commandments, the only one with a promise, says... Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Now, there's no comma I found in there. It doesn't say honor your father and mother if they've been perfect, if they've been honorable. So, I mean, I really had to digest this years ago. I mean, I spent months just looking at this one verse of, God, how do I honor someone that's been dishonorable to me? 
and God walked me through it. Uh, and you know, some of you may have a more severe case of forgiveness and some of you, it may not be as severe as mine. And I'm going to leave a lot of details out because love covers. I've forgiven my dad. Uh, I'm still healing. I'm still developing. And you know, anything that your parents may or may not have had for whatever reasons, God will be a father to you. God himself will father you. He's not going to leave you orphans. So he'll make up for any lack, anything that came from any brokenness. He'll make up and redeem and use in your life. But we are called to honor our father and our mother. There's no comma. No matter what. So if the only thing you have to honor your parents for is because they brought you into the world, honor them for that. Now, some of the stuff that really helped me is, actually, let's read some verses on forgiveness, and I'm going to give you what helped me with my dad, um, because I needed a lot of help to forgive him and to see him the right way. So just some verses about forgiveness. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. In Christ, God forgave you, you with your multitude of sins. Each one of us has had our mountains, but God forgave us. It was a free gift. He just gave it to us. Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. You know, there's a story in the gospel that talks about a king that forgave a man that owed a great debt. And the man was pleading, please, I'll pay you, please, please. And the king was like, you know what? He had compassion on him. He's like, I forgive you, go be free. But this man went out to someone that owed him a much lesser debt and really harshly was like, you need to pay me all that you owe me right now and didn't extend the same grace that the king had extended to him. Now this is a parable about Jesus of we've received so rich of forgiveness that God blots it out, separates it from the east and the west, and there's an expectation that we give what we've received, that we also extend mercy and forgiveness because we've received mercy and forgiveness. Some scripture even goes to say that if we don't forgive, God's not gonna forgive us. So we are called to walk in forgiveness, but sometimes it's really hard, but that doesn't change the call. Now, I had so much bitterness towards my dad as a kid. I thought, well, how can I forgive this man? How, how could he have not done, how could he have done these horrible things? And I spent so much of my life only looking at the negative, only looking at the brokenness and not seeing my dad as a person. And something that really helped me was actually the Proverbs that were saying stuff about um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Seek knowledge, seek wisdom. To your knowledge, add understanding. Well, this opened up my eyes about my dad of, oh, to my knowledge, of my dad, add understanding. Well, how do I understand my father? I had to start looking at, well, what did he come from? How was he raised? He was raised in a house full of abuse, physical, sexual, verbal. His father was violent. His father was a cruel and godless man. He was raised in deep poverty. He went to the military at 17 or 18 years old to escape and ended up having a great career in the military. And then a couple careers after that, you know, that ended up serving him financially really well. And he ended up being a great provider for my family, even though because two separate households, we didn't have much, but we always had, you know, there's a lot of stuff I had in my life that my dad provided that he just wanted me to have. And so to add to my understanding, I had to think, you know, my dad did a lot better than his father. And considering he didn't grow up in a Christian home 
or knowing God. He didn't come to know God really until he was older. You know, he really started pursuing God in his 60s. And he had read the Bible before and known God because my mom found God when she was 21. And of course, that was in our household. And um, she would faithfully go to church and cry out to the Lord. And my dad knew of God through my mom. Um, and when he was in Desert Storm and in the war and after the, the split and he was alone, he was reading the Bible. He was seeking God. But there was a lot of brokenness. He needed a lot of deliverance. There was a lot of generational curses. And, and getting understanding and adding understanding to my knowledge, I started to look at my dad totally different. I started to have this, yes, he hurt my family. Yes, we're still dealing with the wounds. To this day, I have siblings that are walking through the wounds. But God is gracious. And, and adding to my understanding, I saw that instead of being like angry with my dad, I started having the compassion of Christ on him of, man, that man's broken. That man didn't have what he needed. Of course he messed up. Of course he made mistakes. Now, that doesn't make him unaccountable. That doesn't mean that he didn't do wrong. He did wrong and he did wrong knowingly. But he did much better than his father, you know? And I had to give him a lot of grace for that. And suddenly forgiveness started to become really easy. And um, in his 50s, my dad left our family for about a decade. He went and lived somewhere else. We had really not much contact at all. I would write letters and not get responses. Uh, but 10 years later, I saw my dad and he's like, you know, son, I got that letter. Still has it. And um, I had to think of this war-torn man that maybe didn't know how to pick up the phone, that came from a 1950s generation that, well, the children call us. It was a different way of life. And uh, he spent 10 years away. And during those 10 years, I thought, man, where are you in my 20s when I need dad's advice? When my friend's dads are coming to visit, where's my dad? I still needed him, you know? And... um. But then he turned 60, and I remember writing him a letter of, Dad, the family's a mess. This is going on over here. This is going on over here. We need your help. And he retired. He left Kentucky where he was living. He started attending to the family and the way that he knew how. And he didn't do it perfectly, but he showed up. He showed up for my mom. He helped out financially. And, you know... I ended up taking a trip with my parents. This is like 10 years ago to Chile. Um, my mom, me, and my dad. And crazy how the trip even came about. My family's not rich. But but my dad wanted to take us on this trip. And my mom really wanted to go. And I was in a place where I could go with them. And this one trip to Chile changed my life. With It changed everything for me. Because... We're going on a stressful trip to a foreign country where I spoke a little bit of Spanish. My parents don't speak any Spanish. And we're just trying to get by in Santiago, Chile. And um, it, we were tired. <laughs> we had a layover in Panama. My mom got sick in Panama. We show up in Chile. Nothing's organized. We just didn't even know what we were getting into. And um, we're all trying to be mature and have peaceful, but I'm losing it. My mom's losing it. We're both freaking out. My dad's like Mr. Peaceful holding it together. But the way I watched him respect me and my mom, when me and my, I love my mother. And um, she'd be okay with me telling this story because we were just both tired. You know, like looking back, it's like, well, we both needed more sleep. And, you know, let's remember that for future trips. Um, and let's plan better. Uh, but we just got there exhausted and we're button heads and I'm young and just like, I want to do this. And she's like, but I don't feel safe. And, and are you not the only one here? And we're button heads. And my dad's trying to figure out how do I honor this woman without disrespecting my son? And he handled it so beautifully that I saw the love in my father for me like I had never seen before. Now, he had made all the mistakes that he had made. But that was the beginning of a shift for me. And over the next several years in Chicago, and even in the first few years of living in LA, up until about five years ago, um, 
I still had some stuff of man. Like every time I would run into a problem, I'm like, I wouldn't have had this problem if my dad was there to teach me stuff. And now I'm learning as an older man and it's not fair. <laughs> and those are real emotions and it's okay to be like, Rah! I'm not happy about this. Uh, but what God had to show me is my dad's making an effort. And in the last 10 years for all of his 60s, I saw him make a hardcore effort. And now he's now my dad's uh, 71 and in a nursing home. And uh, I just love him. I have no bitterness. I have no dishonor towards him. I don't hold him guilty or accountable anymore. It's like, yeah, those things weren't there, but God's on the throne. God's forgiven my dad. God's forgiven me. I forgive my dad. I seriously forgive him. I think I'm probably... I'm 2,000 miles away, but I consider myself the closest kid to him because through the grace of God, I've been able to see him like my siblings haven't been able to. And maybe that's just because I cried out for that of God, please, for, I, don't, I didn't understand it praying 15 years ago, but God, I want to have closeness with my dad. I don't know how it makes sense. He doesn't even live here. I haven't even talked to him in years. But I would pray, God, I, I want to have my dad. I want to have memories with my dad. And, um, and God came through. And, uh, and so various times and moments, I would just sit there with my dad. And it was awkward for both of us, but it was so beautiful just to sit awkwardly in each other's presence. And um, it's been such impossible it's like the most impossible case of how would you ever forgive this person someone that you're still walking around with open wounds you know i'm bleeding uh but i've seen the loveliness in my dad i've seen the gentleness i've seen the kindness i saw him in his 60s be the sweetest man now he still will get a little foul-mouthed you know he's still a military man he's still from the 1950s he's still from the deep south He's still been to war, <laughs> you know. Uh, he's never gone to therapy. He didn't grow up in the church. He spent some time in, in the Word and got to know God that way, and um, and is still getting to know God in new ways. And um, I got to pray with my dad to become born again. And it was after he started getting dementia and losing some of his ability to communicate the thoughts in his heart. But I can see in his eyes that the thoughts are there, just something's not letting him out. And, um, and his healing has been a, a process of, oh, the healing's coming and uh, where it's going on. But we see it come and I'm believing for a full healing for my 71-year-old dad. But I've seen love in his eyes. I've seen his heart feel whatever I'm saying. And it's few and far between. I don't get to see my parents much. You know, I've had, it's been some difficult years. Uh, COVID and finances and job changes. And I haven't been able to get home as much as I like. And, um, and getting my dad on the phone is not the easiest task with where he is in life right now. But I want you to know that if, if God can show me how to honor a parent that hasn't always been honorable and to forgive the hardest person to forgive someone that may have hurt you that may have abused you in some way or abused your siblings in different ways or abused your mother in their brokenness in their younger days and their older days god can give you the compassion to forgive and add understanding to your knowledge. That's to look at life, their life, the way God does. Where did they come from? How did they end up here? You know, and if you do that to your worst enemy, the person that's hurt you the most, it begins easy, it becomes easier to switch to compassion because instead of seeing how much they hurt you, you see. Not to sound cliche, but hurt people hurt people. And then you, instead of seeing how they're hurting you, you see they're hurt. And you think, man, they're broken. Man, they need love. I bet they weren't taken care of the right way at home. 
So you can forgive anybody. Now, I know a lot of people deal with honoring their parents the right way. And the thing is, you're called to honor them. So I just want to talk about that for a minute is uh, if you're going to remember the bad, then remember all the good too. It's not fair and it's not right. And this is what helped me with my dad. It was actually a YouTube video of a preacher years ago talking about how he, how he forgave his dad. That was the final thing about five years ago where I'm like, you know what? I forgive him. And since then, I have nothing but deep love and gratitude and respect and honor for my imperfect father. I love my dad. I, I love my dad as much as you could love a dad. And what the preacher said, and it's what I'll say to you now, is if you're going to honor the good, the bad, you better honor the good too. You can't only look at, oh, they did all this. And that's what I did to my dad for years was just, well, he did this and he did that. Well, what about all the movies he sat there for? What about when I was going through sexual confusion and hadn't talked to anybody for six months and showed up for a 4th of July barbecue at his house and he opens the door and says, son, I've been studying and I think it's my fault. Now, I made my own choices. But the love for my dad to have even done the research to say, my son's suffering, my son's confused about who he is, and he doesn't want to be that way. For him to open up the door and say, so, he didn't say happy 4th of July, this patriotic man, this soldier. He said, son, I've been studying and turns out I messed up. can forgive just let's just sit with it for a minute what a beautiful thing so often we want to hold somebody guilty for 12 mistakes they made in brief moments and those mistakes might have been brutal they were brutal they messed us up. We've had to overcome, me and my siblings and my mother, things that you should never have to overcome. I saw darkness as a kid. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That nobody should ever see. But it was normal to us. This is what was happening in our family. This is what was happening in my dad's siblings' family. It was normal. The stories that were happening with us, well, uncle so-and-so did this and aunt so-and-so. And when they were kids, they were getting it on. And But God is a redeemer. What God did with me and my dad is a miracle. And I just want you to know that whether you heal with your parents, for some of you, it's your mom. You know, for me, my mom is just a princess. <laughs> but uh, I mean, a gift from God. She's not perfect. You know, she's a... We've had our differences and we disagree on certain things, but she's a mother. She's also a woman. Sometimes she's a girl. Sometimes she's fragile. But she's an excellent soul. She's an amazing woman. I don't know who, you know, if God has for me to get married, I don't know who could compare to my mom. Somebody will. <laughs> uh, but man... She is a trooper. Now, some of you have had a bad dad and you're taking it out on your mom because she's not perfect and you found a couple of flaws and uh, blown them up out of proportion and now you're just enraged. This may be my own siblings. Maybe one of you will watch this. It's 
time to forgive. It's time to add understanding to knowledge. You know, understand what did this woman go through in her life? A husband that cheated and abused? Having to raise kids by herself? That's not easy. You know, a lot of people have issues with their parents. And uh, my mom's going to watch this. And mom, I just want you to know, I love you so much. I love you as much as a heart can love you, you know? Uh, you deserve to hear that in a video. I don't think dad will ever see this, but I love him too. But God, do I love my mom. And she deserves it. She's not perfect. She's pretty close. <laughs> um, some of you aren't able to forgive your parents. And it's time to forgive them. It's time to understand. You know, something that helped me was when I got above age 30. Yes, I'm over 30. More year, I'm more over 30 than you might think. And, um, but I'll, I'll leave that up to your imagination. Um, 30, I'm over 30. Oh, over 30. That's about the age that I had gone through some stuff in life and realized that these expectations I had of my parents as a kid to be perfect and to be superheroes and to be godlike, you know, these divine, they're supposed to be divine, perfect creatures and they're not. So I'm mad. And, um, we got to about 30 and realized, well, life's pretty hard <laughs> and I don't even have kids. Um, just as a single man, life is challenging and it suddenly made me be, and if some of you are getting even older than that and you can look at life and some of you have been parents and look at your own relationship with your kids and give your parents some grace because life is not easy. So, you know, take a chill pill on the like being so angry. So you can forgive anybody. You need to honor your parents no matter what. Find something good about them. You know, what I wanted to say about my dad is there was some, there's some bad stuff that happened, but opening the door, all the meals that he would get me. I mean, that might be a really simple thing, but just after a late night at church and he has a late night at work, just having pizza or a gyro or an Italian beef uh, or some Dairy Queen or just watching a movie. Just being in each other's presence, just being there to hang out, you know? It's like, well, if I'm going to remember the time that he stood me up to go to a Randy Travis concert and how that I held on to that hurt for years, what about the hundreds of times that he was there with me? Just us, just watching a movie. Paradigm shift. So... That's all I want to say for now, but you can forgive. You've been forgiven of much by God. You can forgive. Uh, and that doesn't mean everyone that you forgive, you need to forget what they've done because sometimes we need protections in place. There's some people we can forgive that may never ask for it, but go ahead and, ex you know, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to offer them the compassion and the free mercy that God offered me. And I'm going to do it, Bible says, seven times 70. That's 490 times. So go ahead and forgive them 490 times. And then realize you may need to forgive them a few more in some cases. There's some people we need to not allow in our lives. There's other people we're called to be close to. You know, not everyone we're going to be close to is perfect. So I just want to pray and... Um, Leave that with you. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you, merciful God. God, I pray that you would touch the hearts of these people that watch this, God. Today, in 10 years, whenever you're watching, the presence of God is real, He's not held captive to any time. May the forgiveness of God come upon you now, the compassion of God. Lord, help these ones to cover 
transgression with love. Love covers. God, help us to honor our parents. Where there's been strife, may there be peace. Where there's been judgment, may there be compassion and understanding. Where there's wounds, may there be healing. Holy Spirit, lead each one. God, the words that I don't have in this moment put upon their lips. You pray to God what you need. Yes, Lord, I agree with these ones in prayer. Oh God, may a multitude of forgiveness come. May a multitude of love and compassion come. God, add to our knowledge understanding. God, you can forgive the most difficult case and you can help us to forgive the most difficult case. Now I pray an increase of your love an increase of wisdom, an increase of compassion, and a release, a release from bondage, from the bondage of hatred, from the bondage of judgment, from the bondage of bitterness. Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. I hope this helped you guys. If you're working on forgiven, don't stop. Read the scriptures about it. Verses on forgiveness. How do I honor my parents? Sit with God. Ask him about it. He's going to lead your heart. I know it's not easy. It's possible. Now, I love you. Forgive yourself. Sometimes the person we don't forgive is ourself. Some of us can forgive everybody else, but we beat ourselves up. It's time to forgive yourself too. Have compassion there. If God can do it, so can you.